I call Lord Lexton to ask the first oral question. My Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. I call the Minister, Baroness Williams of Trafford. My Lords, the Government is committed to enabling men with historic convictions for decriminalised homosexual conduct to apply to have their convictions disregarded. We are actively exploring whether further offences can be brought within the scope of the scheme to enable more people to benefit from it. Lexton. My Lords, have the Government noted that exactly 10 years have passed since the disregard scheme was announced um, to right an historic wrong, as it was described at the time, so that uh, gay men convicted or cautioned for offences that have been swept from the statute book and indeed should never have been there in the first place would no longer be stigmatised by having to declare such uh, convictions and cautions. Uh, I thank my noble friend for her reply and pay tribute uh, to all that she has done in this connection, but is it not something of an affront to uh, gay people that four and a half years have elapsed since she gave a commitment to extend the scheme, and not least because um, the Home Office has long been in possession of draft regulations prepared by my friend Paul, Professor Paul Johnson, York University, the greatest expert in the country on the matter, which surely ought to appeal strongly to a government that resorts so frequently to secondary legislation, particularly at a time when Scotland and Northern Ireland have wider disregard schemes than England and Wales. Well, my noble friend will know that I've not only noted uh, what he has said, but we remain committed um, to do all we can to right this historic uh, wrong. And could I pay, at this point, tribute to Paul Johnson and others, uh, like my noble friend, who have been so committed, and to P Professor Johnson for his expertise. Um, I think it's important to note that any additional offences must meet the suitable legal criteria to be eligible to be disregarded. Lord Collins of Highbury. My Lords, after the 1967 Act, remaining anti-gay laws were policed even more aggressively than before. In his research, Peter Tatchell estimated 15,000-plus gay men were convicted in the decades that followed 67. My Lords, lives were ruined for responding to the advances of an attractive policeman. Surely, surely it's time for the government to act. Why is the Home Office trailing behind Scotland and Northern Ireland, which have, as the noble Lord referenced, wider disregard schemes, leaving us behind? Why can't we act now? Yeah. My Lords, I wish it were that simple, but I want to just acknowledge what the Noble Lord has said, that not only do, did men post-1967 face equal uh, difficulties and persecutions for, for their sexuality, um, but um, we are absolutely... And some of them have died. That is the tragic thing. Um, it's, it's complex work, and... Um, and we need to really consider the challenging issues of legal and practical issues in terms of extending uh, the scheme. But I do not want that to translate as that our commitment is any less diminished. Lord Paddock. My Lords, not only does the government appear to be dragging its feet on this issue, but there appears to have been a policy shift since Liz Truss became Minister for Women and Equalities. When the noble baroness, the minister, was the minister for equalities, did she ever feel the UK was focused too heavily on so-called fashionable race, sexuality and gender issues? Could this explain the government's reluctance to take action on this important issue? Well, as I said to the noble Lord, Lord Collins of Highbury, um, our commitment to this has not diminished, uh, despite the fact that it has taken time. Um, when I was the Equalities uh, Minister, and as of now, I remain acquit uh, committed to equality. The government remains committed to equality. And, my Lords, I am very proud of what the Conservative government has brought forward to advance equality. Yeah. Lord Barclay of Nathan. Uh, my Lords, I'm glad that the government 
uh, have chosen to celebrate the life of Alan Turing, for which we must all be grateful for his life and his work. But I think he would be disappointed uh, at the somewhat hypocritical stance to find that he is being celebrated while other people are still suffering from the stigma of this legislation. And a second point, I would prefer to see disregard changed to the word quashed. Um, I... In, in terms of um, Alan Turing, um, he is one of many LGBT people, and as a, as a Mancunian, I absolutely have every um, praise and admiration for Alan Turing and actually the way in which he changed the world. Um, in terms of being persecuted, that's precisely what we do not want, but we do not want unintended consequences of the laws that we make. Lord Cashman. My Lords, it's four and a half years and I have to say the work has been done and we must now move forward on these issues which blight the lives of women and men. Professor Paul Johnson uh, has sent over to the Home Office my private member's bill, which was not drawn in the ballot, but deals specifically and systematically with these pardons and, and the disregards. Therefore, I urge the noble lady, the Minister, for whom I have the highest regard, to move on this issue, publish a timetable for the regulation. Otherwise, the Home Office could join the growing narrative from the gov government, which could be described as stoking a cultural war against the LGBT plus community, or at best, a callous disregard for them. Well, may I um, thank the Noble Lord, for whom I also have the highest regard, and we have worked very, very constructively over the years. Um, I have got his bill in my pack and look forward uh, to reading it. And he's absolutely right to say that it's women and men. It is equality um, uh, before the law that is so important. Um, in terms of a timetable, I do know for the... Um, the offence of uh, soliciting, we are doing a review on that and we intend to uh, publish the outcome of that review uh, during the summer. He will also know that, of course, there are two bills that are coming up and I was trying to gauge whether the timetable for those would be in line with, with the outcome of the review. Lord Scriven. My Lords, the Ministers use the words from the dispatch box that we require suitably legal criteria. It's complex and it's not that simple. Yet two parts of the United Kingdom have laws uh, enacted on this issue on a wider disregard scheme, and Professor Paul Johnson in 2017 gave a full list of draft regulations, including legal definitions. Could the Minister please spell out in more detail what else the Home Office requires other than to get this bill through, rather than just, as it seems to many of us, dragging their feet? My Lords, we are not uh, dragging our feet. Um, and I do, I, I, we are working with Paul Johnson and others to try and um, ensure that uh, we, through, through regulation, that what we do provides for that equality uh, before the law. Um, we are going through offences which go back decades um, to, uh, to see whether they can be um, in line with the disregard and also considering offences that people bring to us to see whether they could be in scope as well.